We've almost finished the structural work on the bow of Brew Peg. Five years after sinking, the handrail finally got repaired with help from Richard, and it looks beautiful. So Richard and I have just done a parts run into town. We've got the gear we need. We're going to start tackling the handrail that was ruined when Brew Peg went underwater. One of the first things that we're trying to tackle is this handrail has been bent in about oh, maybe an inch to two inches, something like that. Um, so it's close enough that we're just going to try and jack it out and see if we can make a difference. Um, if we can't, we're probably going to have to cut and weld and actually just move it over that way. But for now, we're going to try the easy way of um, hopefully seeing if we can just move it out with a jack. Like looking down the line of it, I'm thinking we need to go more in the middle. We've got 13 inches at your end from the cabin, but then I think it pinches in a bit up here a little bit. Yeah. Or they tip in slightly, you know? Agreed. So should we jack the middle? See if we can push the middle out? Every one of them's got to go out. Oh, uh, okay, alright, fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll just crack like the others and yeah. give us an inch. Yeah and come back well you know after it's all said and done it'll come back so the plan is basically to cut into where the welds are on the handrail um, there's already a crack there so it's opening up which is actually quite a favorable for us so we're going to rip out some of the old weld push the handrail out and then re-weld it So with our jacking arrangement we can basically put quite a bit of pressure between the cabin and the handrail and then down here you can see that handrail opens right up starts to actually crack so what we're doing is grinding that weld away and then I'm going to show you the world's ugliest weld but we basically grind it away and then weld up and please don't judge me for these welds these will be flapped up and cleaned up so they look nice um, but that's what we end up with and it sort of holds itself out so if I come back you can sort of see that that, that handrail is roughly parallel now with the cabin, whereas before it was tucked right in. We've gained about maybe two and a half inches by, by doing it this way. So we managed to get it done. There's a little bit of a kink in it, but we're gonna straighten that out by bending the one bit further forward out. Um, but what this means is that if you sort of look along the boat, they're pretty much parallel Going vertical all the way along the boat. So that's quite different than what we've ever been used to on this boat so far So this is the shape that we're trying to duplicate, that, that sort of nice gentle curve that goes from there. That's basically looking at the bow. You can see on the right hand of the picture there's a handrail that's missing, it's been ripped out. And you can see that's the end where it sort of starts, they've just hacked it off. Basically we've got to create a nice gentle curve all the way down. And those vertical pieces are literally vertical uh, if you sort of measure them with a, with a plumb bob. So on this side of the boat, we've got big manky, you have to excuse the wind noise if you can hear it. 
But you can see we've got like big manky bends and they strap ropes, ropes around the boat and just tried to haul on it and clearly it went over top of this and these, these aren't strong enough to lift the boat and basically just they gave way. So there's a little bit of damage we've got to repair. So you can sort of see right down in here, I get that camera to focus, you can see it's basically pushed that um, main solid beam in quite a bit. So we're going to have to deal with that. We'll cut out all of these bent components and then start straightening up these vertical arms. Gotta be both of us. I gotta put this camera down. Yeah, all right. Hey. There you go. <laughs> Jesus. That happened in a matter of nanoseconds. I couldn't even get the camera on. Um, we could get a more powerful computer without spending too much money and uh, it's, it's, causing a, it's causing us a lot of problems so we're, right at the moment we're trying to get a episode out our, our um, racing the uh, anchor winch episode and uh, the computer's not letting us <laughs> it's not letting me turn it on this is like the fifth time I've turned it off and on to get it to go to this hoping it'll go to the next screen really? I say let it cool down recover the important bits and then press. <laughs> okay, cool. So what we what we've got go <laughs> what we've got going on here is some major some major surgery of Jess's iMac. Um, so we were editing away and long story short the computer had a hissy fit and it won't turn on, it won't turn off, it just it's like not it's just refusing to cooperate. So um, we are trying to upload an episode that we're late with um, and the only copy is inside that computer um, and we're desperately trying to figure out how to get this bloody thing to go again um, so okay, Richard's here. yeah luckily Richard is a US Air Force trained airplane fixer-upper when it comes to the electric world so um, that works out really well I think our plan is basically let it cool down we realize that there's a stack load of dust on this little uh, vent at the back here. There was a heap of dust there. Obviously where it sucked. It, when I'm using it and I'm doing videos it heats up it, like really badly. It really does heat too much and the fan just going 100 miles an hour. Stuff. Yeah. Not so easy to put your hand on the back. Yeah it gets Sometimes pretty warm. It eh? gets pretty warm. Yeah. Yeah. It, we're working on it too hard but yeah. yeah.
I gotta be way out here to hold it. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah, to what we can. Like two feet. That's about straight there. Well, this is gonna need some bending, isn't it? Yeah, because the bulk of the bend is actually just there. It's quite straight from there forward. It's quite curved here, and it's relatively straight there. Or we weld those like that. And then bend. And then bend, because that's gonna go out slightly anyway. So the plan that we're gonna use, we're gonna get the long piece of stainless, we're gonna weld it to this piece of the tube here, and then weld it to this um, staunchion, and that's gonna sort of provide the, the vertical and, and horizontal stiffness that we need for now. Then we're gonna brace this against here with the jack, and then start pulling the stainless round and welding it into each staunchion as we go forward. Um, yeah, and if, we, and if we have any issues with some of them bending in or anything like that, we can probably straighten them out with the jack, um, just like we did with the earlier ones um, down the side of the boat. So, a bit of drama. Um, this is our editing iMac. We're running late on an episode, and we are stripping it down because the episode is stuck inside it, and we can't get it out and upload it. So the plan is we're gonna try and rip the hard drive out of this. And we're going to hopefully be able to get the um, file, upload it to YouTube, and get it out to everybody. And you know, yeah, so you can buy a, you can buy an adapter where you basically plug it onto the hard drive and it just turns it into a USB or something and you can pull it into a different computer. So once we got the hard drive out, we were able to stick it in an external adapter like this and we really didn't know if this hard drive was going to work, it was a bit of a guess and it took ages and a couple of goes and then eventually, OS, that little thing popped up on the screen, that's our operating system um, for the other Mac, we were able to get into the hard drive and pull out the files. So thankfully we didn't lose um, episodes worth of data. So yeah, that was a massive win for us. Ah, too tall. camera so Richard just winged it and look how unbelievably perfect this is so basically it's pretty much bang on all of the staunchions and then right down here we're just going to join this up we're gonna weld all the way around there um, but it pretty much matches the curve all the way around the boat I spin around have a look forward you can sort of see it comes nicely around we we'll weld onto each one of these and then this is the bend we got a piece, this piece here we got from the scrapyard, it's the same size and everything as the handrail and then we got an exhaust shop just to throw a bend in it that we duplicated off that one there, just basically copied the, the bend. So then yeah, we'll weld this main one in and then we'll start working on getting this front one lined up.
So now that we've got the basic structure put together, this is our front corner. So where the old handrail was ripped out, we've got a big gap. So what the plan is, is literally just to make a V of stainless that's the same sort of diameter, um, and we're going to weld it in. It doesn't have to be a strength thing, we're gonna have plenty of strength with the way that this handrail will be welded, it just has to stop any water going into that pipe. That's better. So on this forward edge, the plan that we've decided to come up with is we're going to basically just sit this, the new piece of stainless on top like this and then sort of weld it in rather than try and sink it down into it and make it all the same height. really doesn't matter, I mean this just has to be functional and make sure it's never going to come out. So uh, we're going to do that. So now that we've basically got the structure welded in, uh, we pretty much just need to go through and clean up the welds. We do that with a, uh, a zirconia flapper disc. So we actually use a 40 grit, there's an old one, but 40 grit flapper disc, and we just rip through. The welds came up really beautiful with a bit of a tidy up. There we have it. Big, beautiful handrails. Look at those things. I've actually never seen this look so good. It's always had a bent and manky handrail on the side. So um, I'm absolutely stoked with how well that turned out. It was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I thought it was gonna need like, you know, hydraulic presses and all sorts of carry-on and Richard sorted it out by bending it on a skip, of all things. So um, yeah, really stoked how that turned out. That's gonna be really great at sea. The top of the handrail right at the front of the bow there is, is probably 1.3 meters. It's really quite tall um, from the deck up to the top of it. So it's a really nice, sturdy um, support out at sea. Hi guys, just an update with where we're at with a few things. So Richard's been here for almost a week and um, he's here for another couple of weeks from America and just the most amazing progress has been made with Damon Rich so we're getting really great together Whoa, just got on. lots done yeah it's been brilliant um, you've obviously just seen the handrail being built mm. um, we're about to work on closing up the hull we're actually so, at the stage of closing up the coffer dam which yeah, so that means the tanks are done so front, yeah. front tanks are uh, almost finished as we speak um, they'll be finished in the next few days and then um, yeah we'll start welding up the coffer dam and the hull will be watertight for the first time in four years yeah, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, John was um, supposed to be with us. We had some really major setbacks, and we're really thinking of him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good luck with everything that's going on, John, and we'll catch up with you really soon. Um, we, uh, as you saw, we had some drama with our computer. Our little handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, thanks to Richard, uh, whose computer saved the day. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and Madison for all your advice about what computer we need to get to be able to keep doing episodes. We really need something stronger than we've been using, more powerful, yeah. you know. Um, but thanks guys, you've been a great help. And I also want to say thanks to um, Juan at Cherry Solar. Mm. So they uh, have offered to basically, so we're having some dramas with our solar. Sorry, we've got flies going everywhere, so that's why I'm <laughs> flapping my arms around. So we've, we've been having some drama with solar and things as you've seen in, in the previous episodes. Um, Juan at Cherry Solar has offered to basically repanel the roof. Um, so I'm working with him at the moment to figure out what size and, and how many we need and he's going to um, send out the panels that we need. Um, and then we can start figuring out uh, what we need to do in terms of inverters as well. So um, yeah, we, we, massive... know, we know pretty much what was the problem, right? Yeah, we're pretty sure we know that it was the old inverter. Um, 
We haven't been able to absolutely confirm that, but um, we can infer it because everything else seems to be working okay. So the only sort of area that, that isn't working is the inverter. So pretty, pretty confident that that's what's going on. Um, so yeah, really absolutely stoked to have those guys on board. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, so um, Richard and Dame are um, carrying on. It's quite a big job, the engineer, um, so the electrics. Mm. Um, so it, it's a big job and um, we're working at getting schematics. So um, Richard and Dame are happy yeah. to carry on, but we're starting to get the gauges in from Red Ark. Um, and we've talked to Red Ark, uh, their team, about what we need to do to make sure it's all okay. So it's really, it's, it's going ahead. It's great. Yeah. It should be a couple of weeks and we should be... Yeah. be well ahead from where we are but it's a, it's a big process it takes a long time so so this will give us gauge engine um, engine vital visibility at the engine room and also up in the wheelhouse um, and it's a bit of a unique scenario because our, our wheelhouse gauges are maybe six or eight meters maybe more ten meters away from the engine when in, you know on the course of the wire run um, so it's a unique situation we're having to extend factory wiring harnesses and a few other things so um, we work with Red Arc technical side to, to go through and make sure that we get it absolutely bang on. Um, and they were awesome to deal with. They were really, really helpful and, and really clarified our questions. It was cool because they make the gauges. They knew they knew the tech details really intimately, so it made it actually really easy to be Fast. able to do it. Mm, yeah. Fast to get answered. Yeah. Yeah. And they've sponsored us with these gauges, um, which are most amazing gauges. Really gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about the whole thing. Like we're gonna we're gonna share the whole thing, how it goes, what it's like to install them, and all of it. So yeah. um, we'll, we'll keep it updated. Lost in the mm. tool mix that never be found. Definitely. <laughs> hey, Nico. Um, is close to the home, so we could talk. Has been made with Damon. Rich, sort of, we need to get to be able to keep doing it. But Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, see ya. Those trees, twelve years old, feel the wind, watch the river run, and the sun would always shine. When we sat there, you and I, the river's gonna cry when you're.